Welcome back. Joining us now, a familiar face to new six viewers, Alex Colici. He's the CEO of California-based Umail Incorporated, a company that provides a free service to block robocalls. Alex mm. has been featured on dozens of our investigations into the robocall and spoofing epidemic with News 6 investigator Mike Holfeld. Welcome to both of you. We're so happy to have you here this Thanks, morning. Oh, thank you. And what a great story, Mike. Yeah, and obviously amazing. you work together. Can you tell us a little bit about it for anyone who's unfamiliar? Well, Alex and I have been working together. We were talking about it probably since 2017. Mm -hmm. And basically what's happening is people are being frustrated by these unwelcome calls. And we were just talking about, uh, Alex and I were just talking about this new one, which seems new to Central Florida, where calls are actually coming in from France and London, Alex, right? Yeah, there's something called the Juan Geary scam. And so they call you from an international number that's mm -hmm. caller pays. Mm -hmm. So when you call back wondering, oh, why is France calling me or why is Spain calling me? Now you're on the hook to pay. And so you'll be caught, you, when you call them, you'll hear music, they'll tell you to stay on hold, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden you get a big phone bill 30 days later. And it seems like these robocalls are only getting worse. I know that you did another report right around Christmas time right. when we had a break, <laughs> but it seems like the break is over and we're oh, yeah. back in it. Yeah, the robocalls sit at, sit at around five billion a month now in the US. And it's been that way for the last six months. So if there's good news, it's not getting a lot worse, but it's also not getting better. Five billion. Five billion, I think I get a million of those. <laughs> no doubt about that. So if my number uh, shows up on the screen, how are they getting it? Is it, is it through all the different places that I've given my phone number, like what's going through the, the easiest process? way they get it is completely random. They just start calling through an area code and a prefix, all mm -hmm. 10,000 numbers, then do the next one, then do the next one. And they see when does somebody answer. They're just trying to find numbers that way. They're generally not doing anything super sophisticated. We've talked about this, mm -hmm. Alex. What's the end game with these things? Are they trying to get our money, our identity? What is it? They're generally trying to get your money and your identity. So there's just tons of scams that are out there now. One of the biggest and nastiest is health insurance. Mm -hmm. They claim to have a very discounted, unbelievably great health insurance plan, and they're basically just getting your credit card. Mm. And so that's, that's terrible, right? You think you have insurance, you don't, the card never comes, and you're out money. We were talking about this spoofing. I had a guy come into the, he knew, he knew you were coming in this today. <laughs> he came in a couple days ago, what a character. Grady Marsh came into the studio this week after he discovered his number was being spoofed. He'd never heard the term spoofing before. Watch this. That is not only frustrating, it angers me because like I had this lady to call me back yeah. and to just chew me out. I'm going to report you, and I don't think you want to be reported. The woman who fired off that verbal salvo makes it clear she's not going to be intimidated. I am 83 years old, and I am a paralegal. The spoof numbers deliver messages Umail Incorporated has been tracking month after month. Listen. This is an important message regarding your current credit card account. We are calling you from investigation team of IRS. I left that uh, IRS number there, guys, because Alex and I have talked about that. Here comes tax time again, right. April 15th. Yes, seriously. Are we to expect those again, Alex? What do you yeah, think? Yeah, I mean, the IRS guys keep going all the time. Mm -hmm. They're just constant. But they do tend to peak around tax season. Yeah, it seems like they are a little topical here. You yes. know, they try to find things that are going on around the, around the country, and then they use that tactic as they try to get your money. Right. The way, oh, sorry. And one thing to remember is the IRS will never call and threaten you, yeah. right? We, we tell viewers that, <laughs> exactly. that it's intimidating when you get a call yeah. for saying they're up from the IRS and they're coming to get you. That's right. They, they never call. And what you should think about with these robocallers is they're really marketers in the wrong business. They're mm. in the business of trying to get you to answer the phone so they can take your money. Okay. And they'll do anything. They'll be topical. They'll use the Obamacare mm. deadline. They'll use the tax deadline. Mm. They'll use the government shutdown. They'll use whatever they can to get you to press one and talk to them. I bet you have dealt with this before, Mike, but I've done stories before where I've told the person on the other end of the line, I'm a journalist. I am mm. with News 6 in Orlando, and they laugh at me. Yeah. I mean, to to hear that woman yelling back at yeah. your viewer right, who came in and, and saying those horrible things to someone she has no idea, I'm not surprised because I've had people do the same. Well, Is it because they can't track them, uh, they're having a hard time tracking them down? Like what's going into that process of holding these people accountable? Well, it's really difficult yeah. because it's very easy to just pick the number you want to be when you make an automated dialed call. You can make lots of them and it doesn't cost very much money. You can even go to websites where you type in the message you want. You give them a list of phone numbers and you hit a button and it's off making calls for you. 
Mm-hmm. And those that you might think, well, why are they even there? And it's, you know, if you're the Red Cross and you want to do a blood donation drive, that's not a bad thing to do. You've right. got a list of numbers that people like to be called. Mm-hmm. If you're an IRS scammer, that's a great way to get a lot of people quickly. So what is the best thing to do? Should we just not answer numbers we don't know? That's what I do. <laughs> if, if I don't already have your number, I don't want you to call me. That's actually, there's three things. So okay. one is don't answer numbers you don't know. Mm-hmm. At least on your cell phone, get a robocall blocking app. We have one at email, right. but there are others. You should definitely have it. And don't reflexively dial numbers back. A lot of us, we get a number that calls, oh, let me call it back. It's it's just not going to be See, good news. I think that sounds terrifying. I don't want to call back somebody. I don't know. We're going to talk about this more on, on the Sunday show with Justin, but the international yeah. situation where it's coming from France, you're going to put together an app that will be available next week, is it? We're adding international call blocking to our Android app on Umail because mm-hmm. the vast majority of people don't get international calls right. and the ones they're getting now are the caller pays scam to get mm-hmm. you to just press the button and call back. Mm-hmm. So we want to make it so everybody can just hit a button and say, I don't want these anymore. Wow. Good it, is a, it is an epidemic, that is for yes. sure. And we're glad that, uh, that you're doing something about it mm-hmm. and they're trying to get to the bottom of it. So again, we will have more with Mike and Alex on uh, the weekly on Sunday morning at 8 o'clock. We hope you join us then. Yeah, thank you both for being here this morning. Great resource.